normalization so in this unit 2 normalization we are going to learn different topics such as purpose of normalization then what are the anomalies different types of anomalies when we perform the database modification then we are going to learn what is the importance of functional dependencies uh, after that we learn all the normal forms process of normalization first normal form second third normal form along with the BCNF. So, let's start with the topic number one, purpose of normalization. So, in this uh, uh, topic, we are first going to learn what is the purpose of normalization. So, as we know, the database is nothing but the collection of records, which are interrelated to each other. Interrelated means that we store the records of a particular company, particular institute, particular organization together that is called interrelated records. We, if we consider the bank, we consider the records such as the accounts of the persons, customers, their records, employees of the bank, loan in the loan accounts in the bank, all these together we consider as a bank account records. So, that type of records together we call it as a interrelated records which are related to each other and all these records we store in the database system. Now, when we store these records in the file, how these records to be organized? That is very important because we call when we store these records in good forms, then only it is easily accessible, easily retrievable or easily we can use it. So, different purposes of normalization we are going to learn. So, first goal of relational database design is that store the records information with unnecessary redundancy. Now, here in this we can see the different records in this table such as name, address, phone number, age of the students. So, when we consider that here we store the records, single record for a particular student, one record for one student. So, when what is the first goal of relational database management system is that store the information without unnecessary redundancy. Means in this record, uh, table there is an address of student. Suppose we create another table in the university where the courses uh, taken by the students or the courses for which that particular student enroll and if we store the address of the student there also then we call that it is a redundancy. Means the address is stored in both tables that is database redundancy. Then Second goal of relational database design is to retrieve the information easily. So, whatever the information we stored in this entire database for the particular organization, we need that the information should be retrieved easily. Means, suppose in this particular table, I want the name of a student with role number 5. I want to retrieve the name of student with role number 5, then it should be retrieved easily. Then the third goal is that or for that we use normalization. What is the approach for that is normalization. So, the purpose of normalization is to achieve the goal of relational database designs. Now, whenever we create the tables, when we convert this in normalization, we say that the database is in good form. So, what is the purpose of normalization? First, the minimal number of attributes. For example, if we consider the university database and we consider different records to be stored, for example, we want to store the records of students, we want to store the records of instructor, courses, departments, etc. Then in each of this table, the number of attributes should be minimum. Whatever the required attributes that only we are going to store. For example, in this table, student information we have stored such as the role number, name, address, phone number, age along that we can store the marks of the student. But their relatives, their mother, father name, these are not required here. Means try to minimize the number of attributes. Second goal of purpose of normalization is the minimal redundancy with each attribute. As I told uh, previously that for example, address is stored in this table of the student, then that address not necessary to store in another table. So, that is minimal redundancy with each attribute 
attributes with a close logical relation. Attributes with a close logical relation means what? For example, here in this table itself, roll number 1 has its name, roll number 1 has its address, has its phone number, has its age. So, that every attribute should have logical relation. In this table, suppose we add one more uh, attribute with some another account number. So, that here in the university that is not required. So, in this way, every attribute there should be a close logical relation means this is the address of the student, this is the phone number of the student, this is the age of the students like this. Now, when we consider the normalization, this is the simple diagram how the normalization work. So, there are two ways to create the database design. Now, when we consider the database design, first one is the thing is that we need to collect the data. What kind of data we are going to store in the database. So, for that case, first we need to find out the user requirements. Who are the users? For example, if we consider the university database, the users are the students, instructors and all other deans, HODs, etc. When we consider the bank database, then who are the users? Then in that case, the customers are the users, employees of the bank are the users. So, first we need to identify the users. Who are the users of the database? Along with that, what are their requirement, user requirement? Then what kind of already forms or something they are using to store the records manually that we need to collect all these together we consider as a data resource. Once we get this entire data then we create the table. Then there are two options either directly we create the tables or second option is that we create some rough tables and then apply the normalization techniques on that such as 1NF, 2NF, 3NF and convert that it into the good database design. So, normally the second approach is used that first we create the table, apply the normalization techniques and generate a good database design. Then, as I told you, purpose of normalization is remove the or avoid the database redundancy. Now, now see that Database redundancy can be minimized. We can minimize the database redundancy, but total avoiding the database redundancy is not possible. In some cases, we require the redundancy, but try to minimize the data redundancy. Now, why to minimize this data redundancy? That we are going to learn with the help of update anomalies. For example, here we are going to consider the example relation that is top branch relation. In database system, instead of table, we normally call it as a relation. Why? Because this is a relational database design or we call it as a RDBMS. So, when we consider RDBMS, the re, uh, table is known as relation. So, here we consider the example relation staff branch in which there are some attributes, staff number, S name position, salary, branch number and branch address. In this uh, some instance I have shown here, some of the tuples are there, some of the records are there in this table with the staff number, S name, position, salary, branch number and branch address. Now when we observe this particular table, what we observe here? So in this table or in this relation, we observe some redundancy. So, where is that redundancy? That redundancy is with branch address. For example, if we consider the branch address is here. For example, the branch B003, it appears multiple times here. B003 here, here. So, that B003 address also appears multiple times. You can observe it is here 163. Then this is 163 main and this is 163 main. Means this branch appears three times and that's why its address appears three times. For if we consider that this particular relation staff branch table has hundreds of the uh, records. So in that it is possible that that particular staff whatever particular branch there are 
10 staffs or 20 staffs are working in that branch number B003. Then that B003 branch number and its address will appear 20 times in this table. If we consider there are hundreds of the total records and 20 staffs are working with branch B003, then it is more create more redundancy. So, when it increase the redundancy, automatically it increase the storage space, more storage is required and the retrieval and all these things are become difficult. So, that we call it as a update anomalies. So, so here we are going to see what are the different at update anomalies. So, there are three types of update anomalies, insertion anomaly, deletion anomaly or modification anomalies. First, we are going to learn the insertion anomalies. So, the same example we are going to learn this table of, of staff branch. There are two main types of insertion anomalies. What is the first one? To insert a new member of staff must include the details of the branch. For example, suppose I want to insert a new member with SL01. Now, in this case, I need to insert the name. Suppose XYZ is the name of the staff, position is the manager of this, then its a salary is 50,000. Suppose, for example, and the branch he is working is B003. Again, I need to insert the address 163 main like this. Miss this branch address, I need to add with the name of or new member of the staff. As I already told, suppose I increase the number of staff of that particular branch, that number of times the address we need to insert. Then second anomaly is the insertion anomaly is that or second type is that to insert a new branch that currently has no members of staff need to enter the nulls. Okay, means what? For example, here the branch number B, I want to add a new band, new branch, okay, that is currently open, but there is no staff 8 allocated. For example, suppose I want to insert B001 and for that branch, some address is there. I want, suppose for example, the address is main Pune. Now, what happens in this case, along with this branch number and branch address, I need to add the staff information, but the branch is newly opened. There is no staff 8 working with that branch means I need to add here null values for staff number, staff name, position and salary. All values I need to insert here the null values. But for this staff branch relation, staff number and branch number we consider as a primary key. So, the primary key cannot insert a null value means I cannot add a new staff, uh, sorry, branch information for which there is no member of staff is 8 available. When I uh, insert it, when the new staff is allocated to that branch, till I cannot insert that particular branch information that is known as insertion anomalies. Now, we move to the next one that is deletion anomaly. Now, what is the deletion anomaly? For example, suppose I delete here the record for I execute the info, uh, simple query delete from staff branch where staff number is equal to SA9. Suppose I want to delete or in execute an instruction, delete from staff branch where staff number is equal to SA9. So, what happens? I delete this particular entire record will be deleted from the staff branch. So, when I delete that record of the particular staff SA9, along with that, the branch information B007 is also deleted, which for which there is only one employee SA9 and I have deleted that. Means along with the staff which is the last one for that particular branch, the branch information also deleted. So, that is known as deletion anomaly. Deleting the last member of the staff located at a branch also delete the details about the branch. 
Then the next one is modification anomalies. Now modification anomalies means what? Suppose we want to update two main types of modification anomalies. The first one is that to change the address of the branch, for example, we consider B003. So, B003 appears how many times? Three times is appear here. So, if that branch address has been changed from this main, uh, this is changed to some place, other place, then in that case, I need to update that branch address at three records. Correct? Suppose again as the same example, if this branch appear 20 times in this staff branch, there are 20 staffs are allocated to that branch, then 20 records I need to change the address of the branch. So, that is very difficult if the, all these are not updated appropriately. For example, three records are there with B003. The rec two records, their branch has address has been updated and the one record, the branch address remains as it is a previous. Then it result in database inconsistency. Means the updation, whatever the modification we are going to perform, it should be carried out at all appropriate tuples. Otherwise, database will become inconsistent. So, these three types of anomalies are there. Again, I am repeating insertion anomaly, deletion anomaly and modification anomaly. And why all these are happen? Because data redundancy. What kind of redundancy is in this table? The redundancy is that the branch address appears along with the branch number multiple times. Now, how to avoid this data redundancy? We can avoid the data redundancy with the help of decomposition. Then what is decomposition? It is a simple. Decomposition means the original relation we decompose or divide into multiple smaller relation. That we call it as a decomposition. For example, the staff branch relation, we divide it into two relation, staff relation with staff number, S name, position, salary and branch number. Another relation is the branch relation with branch number and branch address. Clear? So, like this, there are two separate tables, branch number, uh, staff and branch. Now, here we can observe that the branch number appears in the branch table and also in the staff table. So, as I told previously that we can minimize the redundancy, but we cannot avoid the total redundancy. In some cases, we need to use the redundant data, but try to minimize the redundancy. Now, see here with these two, what uh, we observe here? What we observe that the first one is staff relation and second one is the branch. Now, suppose for example, I want to insert. Now, again we see whether it has an anomaly or not. So, first we consider the insertion anomaly. Suppose I want to insert a staff with SL01 and the branch address is B003. So, here it is simple. I not necessary to add the address here along with the branch number. Only branch number I need to mention here for that particular staff for which it is allocated. Second insertion means the first insertion anomaly will not occur here. Second one is that suppose I want to insert a new branch B001 for which there is no staff 8 allocated. Then in that case I can easily add the details of this branch without inserting the records for the staff. Miss that second insertion anomaly also removed here. Then deletion anomaly. For example, suppose I delete the record of SA9. I delete again, I execute the same query delete from staff branch where staff number is equal to SA9. Then in that case, what happens here? The record is deleted from the staff, plus the branch information remains as it is in the branch relation. Miss, even if we remove the last member of the staff from the branch, the information of the branch remains as it is. And the third one is updation anomaly. Suppose I want to update the address of B003. I need to add update here only in this particular branch table. 
not necessary to do anything here in this top table. Means again the updation or modification is very simple and that is the use of normalization. So, decomp when we consider the decomposition, there are two properties of decomposition, main properties. First one is lossless joint decomposition and the second one is dependency preservation. Afterwards, we are going to learn it detail again. Only I am going to tell you here the definition or what it means. So, the first property of decomposition is lossless joint decomposition where when we join these two decomposed relation again with using any join operation that join operation again we are going to learn so when we join it again for any purpose when we join it again it should create the original relation no extraneous tuples should it create or no less tuples it should create it should create the original relation then only we call it as a lossless join decomposition that is the first property of decomposition whenever we decompose a relation. Second one is dependency preservation. Dependency preservation means for example, here this particular staff has this staff name. Means for this staff has SL41 has its name Julie Lee. We, who is working as a position assistant with salary 9000 at branch 005 means all these particular attributes four attributes are depends on the staff number for SL41 these all records are there similarly for branch B003 this is the address of the branch so when we decompose the relation this dependency should be preserved so these are the main two properties of decomposition of a relation into multiple relation. So, next topic we are going to learn the functional